Hey guys and girls, this is Nathan and welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Coloring Tips and Tricks. This is going to be episode 23 and we're talking about picking colors. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody from the Comic Book Coloring 101 series. Uh, last episode we were talking about breaking down the color wheel and different uh, color harmonies. And it's kind of taking that stuff uh, uh, another step forward and um, learning how to use the color wheel to pick uh, colors. And... So we have our friend the color wheel here, um, and this is from uh, this is an artist James Gurney. Uh, you might not know the name, but chances are you know his work. He's the creator of Dinotopia. Um, it's an amazing uh, book series where uh, he just paints fantastic images, dinosaurs and uh, towns, townscapes and stuff, and uh, just a master of of using. Uh, both color and and light and um, in his book uh, oddly enough called color and light <laughs> it's a uh, he goes through what he calls uh, what well, I thought was very interesting uh, he goes through obviously chapters and chapters of different uh, colors and how to how they mix and stuff like that even though it it's uh, he's a painter we can still use those techniques and carry them over into uh, combo coloring and um, but one of the fascinating things I thought was when he's talking about uh, gamut masking. And I posted up a video that he had on his YouTube channel up on my Facebook. And, but I'll, uh, I'll put the, the link in the description for that as well. Um, but when he's talking about gamut masking, it's like we have uh, this image, the color wheel. Um, this here is put together digitally by Smiling Weapon. Uh, I'll put the link to their DeviantArt uh, in the description as well, but this is such a such an awesome tool, and uh, so we just start off with the basic color wheel, but then there's things included, such as uh, just desaturating everything. Um, here we are uh, going darker and saturated at the same time, and here we are just getting desaturated. The more we get to the middle, so this here would be your your white point. And then going out and then getting lighter as we get to the middle and uh, just getting more saturated or desaturated and darker as we go to the middle uh, yeah so we have those different different color options on this tool but then where the masking comes in so we have like for uh, for different colors and these are used in conjunction with your different different effects down here and I think it's awesome it really really limits uh, the colors that you can choose from and um, I, I linked the uh, the mask together so if we want like different color choices we can go around and check them out so these would be like the colors you, you have to choose from for your piece. Um, complementary colors and you know some extras on the side there. For atmosphere and again uh, you know play around with these guys it's really really great. Uh, limited color palette which is one of my favorites right here. Uh, triad and the color accent where we'll pick uh, you know, these are our main colors we're going to work with, and this here would be our accent, say, for like our shadows or something. Um, or like, you know, some kind of uh, light source uh, to make the other colors pop out. Um, the one I'm going to be showing today is going to be this guy with the gradu graduated saturation and the limited color palette, like these guys right here. Um, I think it's important to say, I mean, can't can't really teach you guys how to pick colors. Nobody could really teach you. Um, it's it's one of those things where you give an image, like this uh, Spider-Man piece. This is by um, Maxim uh, Cotton. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We had seen that before when I was doing the um, composition with color, uh, that video. But um, such a, a nice Spider-Man piece and um, you know, it's simple enough where I can show you guys uh, picking colors on it. But uh, 
it's one of those things, picking colors, where I guess after a while, like you, you get your own style. You know, you know your colors that you like to work with. Um, every artist has it, uh, painter, Photoshop artist, whatever. Um, so like, say like my color palette up here, you guys could, you know, take a screenshot, copy all these colors and everything, but that doesn't help you, you know, know which colors to pick. But, um, so hopefully in this tool here, this gamut masking tool is a, is a big help and, uh, get, getting you in that right direction. Uh, limiting your color palette. You know, the thing about Photoshop is there's like millions and millions of colors to choose from, and I think that overcomplicates things. Uh, so this here, within this mask, it keeps it limited as to what you, what you can do. Let me copy this and retitle that color. So I make sure I have my flats separate in case I need it later on. But let's say we're gonna go for an evening type of sky here for Spider-Man. He's had a, a tough day and he's just uh, taking a break on top of a pole and he's realizing, oh man, I'm not done yet. So let's get back into it. Um, let's go with an orangish type of sky. Maybe we'll go with this one right here. Let me shrink that down a little bit. Oops. Wrong way. There we go. And... So for Spider-Man, well, first of all, let me go back to the flats. Usually when I do my flat colors, just keep it like local colors. Uh, so Spider-Man is going to be blue and red. Sky's blue. You know, buildings are, you know, usually neutral colors. Unless, of course, you're in Miami or something where everything's pink and uh, green and whatever, yellow, uh, some crazy colors. Uh, but yeah, say, you know, of course we know Spider-Man's in New York City, so uh, just, you know, grays and offshoots of grays for the for the buildings. Um, it's what we call local colors. And, uh, you know, it's just usually like the color, the actual color something is when just white light is hitting it. Um, is the best, best way to explain that. And um, what we're doing is like we're putting him in this orangish environment. Uh, this evening sky. So of course, this is going to be reflected in the colors, and having like this limited color palette really helps with that. Um, so let's pick a. So you can see we don't have any red. Well, we have like some grayish reds in here. So it's forcing us like we're going to pick a, a reddish orange, and that really puts them in to this environment. Let's brighten that up a little bit more, and a little bit more. Nah, not that much. I think that looks good. You can see here we don't have any blues at all to choose from. Maybe like this this gray right here. But uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to pick this blue-green. And we're going to put that on there. So you can see it's like the orange is mixing with the blue. And it's giving us like this uh, it's more towards greenish color. And I think that works very nicely. And now... Our white, this is going to be like our lightest color right here is this yellow. So I don't know if you can see that. It's just a real subtle subtle change. Just kind of desatch, or darkens it a little bit more. Or we can go, so this, this other gray. That's probably a little bit more realistic. You know, for me, I mean, it's just... A guideline you know I probably add more more yellow and more orange to it uh, but I think that works for argument's sake uh, say the flagpole so we have like these de desaturated colors in here to choose from so I go with that and see the windows we had this color for our sky so let's go let's go lighter and more uh, desaturated let's see like this I think that color works or a little bit brighter bit more yellow so we're going towards the yellow oranges I think that works pretty good these colors here for these buildings uh, they're gonna be more in the background so they're gonna be a little bit a little bit darker uh, depending on where, where our light source is of course but uh, so we're gonna go more towards this side you know because it has like more blue in it than the warm colors because 
warm colors come forward and cool colors push everything back. And uh, so let's see, more like that. And this building back here, I can make this other color. Oops, I have to pick a color for these guys. Let's go more desaturated. So you can see I'm just trying out, you know, picking up different colors from here and seeing what works. Maybe I'll lighten these foreground guys a little bit more. And now these foreground buildings, you know, we'll pick uh, warm desaturated colors. A little bit darker. That works for that guy. We'll go like that. And this guy, maybe. I didn't like that one too much. That works. That guy's a little bit too dark. And a little bit darker. A little bit darker still. No. Let's try that. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. That guy's a little too green. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Maybe we'll just lighten this guy up a little bit more. But you can see, you know, just from picking colors from in here, how well this works as a whole as a whole harmony, you know, and it looks like Spider-Man is actually in, in this environment. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's like a, I think it's it. I mean, it's like very simple, very easy to do. Um, you know, with this, you can, if you have, make sure, because I think when I downloaded the file, it didn't have like the layer masks merged. But with that, if you put that, if you link those together, you can, you know, go to free transform. You can just move it around and pick your different colors that you want. And you can also uh, flip it, you know, horizontal. So you can have other choices as well. Uh, that goes for all the other masks on here as well. But a uh, very handy tool. I'm going to get you on your way to, uh, to help uh, picking colors. And uh, I guess other tips I would have would be, you know, look at your favorite colors. You know, see how they pick colors, uh, study study their work, just don't look at one issue, look at a, a body of their work on, you know, with different artists as well, see how they handle different situations. Um, you could start, I mean, just like a, a artist or penciler might start off by, you know, redrawing or tracing over, you know, one of their favorite comic book artists, you know, we're allowed to do the same as colorists. Uh, you know, we can we can use that same color scheme and, and not only just do it, but see why it works, break it down. Uh, look at look at painters, look at video games, look, you know, just tons of different sources. And, you know, try and understand why they're using those colors and what makes them work. And I think all of that combined will help you build your own color palette, your own color sense, and, uh, and start to understand uh, why you like those colors and why you think they work together. Yeah, you know, under those circumstances, is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Is it evening? What's the light source? Is it this explosion? You know, so should there be, you know, some uh, some orange light, you know, bouncing off the characters? Is it moonlight? You know, maybe they should be, you know, nice cool colors. Um, you know, is there some kind of special effect? You know, is the Scarlet Witch blasting us with her powers that are pink? You know, so that pink should be reflected off that blue and, you know, make it maybe make it more purplish color. Um, these are all things to, to think about uh, when you're setting up your scenes and um, yeah I think that's gonna about do it for today if you want to see more of my work check out uh, lemmage.deviantart.com uh, I've got my Facebook fan page up now uh, if you haven't checked it out yet please do um, I'm gonna be posting up a lot more uh, color YouTube videos and stuff articles that I find uh, uh, useful. Um, I'll, I'll post them up on there. Um, you know, stuff that I can't necessarily put like in a video. So I think it'll be a great resource. Um, and that's uh, facebook.com slash Lumage1, the number one. I'll put the link in the description uh, for that as well. And um, 
yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And if you like what you see, hit the like button. Helps me out tons. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you soon. All right, thanks. Bye.